everyone, welcome to Stitching It. I hope you had a great Christmas and Santa was nice to you. He brought me a brand new um, Samsung Android tablet, which I asked for for one reason, which is um, to be able to use an app that's been getting a lot of buzz from cross stitchers over the past few months called Pattern Keeper app. And this is an app that is um, for Android only currently. And um, it is an app that takes PDF uh, cross stitch patterns and decodes the symbols in order to um, make a mock-up and, and a stitching progress app uh, for all of your full coverage type projects. So. Um, like I said, I am an Apple user typically, and I love my iPad and my iPhone, but it's not on iOS yet. So um, I found a good budget tablet. This is an 8-inch Samsung tablet that um, is basically the least expensive um, name brand tablet that I could find. I have purchased, um, you know off-brand tablets in the past and they did just not work out for me so um, I so far the Samsung is working out pretty well for me and it's the same size as an iPad mini and it's got the latest Android I think 9.0 I think is what it says that it has on there so um, if you want any more information about that I will put a link um, about that but um, the, today's video is not about the tablet. It's about the app Pattern Keeper on the tablet <laughs> and how I have been transferring and using PDFs that were already in use on um, on my iPad and how I've been getting them over to Android and converting them to this app. And I also wanted to do sort of a, not really a tutorial, but just kind of um, a basic uh, feature overview and review of this app because even though it is still in development and it has a free trial available it is a paid app and so before you invest in your time and energy and your money into an app and a tablet um, I hope that this video will help you make some uh, good decisions about that so if you have any questions just leave um, a comment below and I will try to answer them as best as I can but there is a Facebook group called uh, stitching with pattern keeper that's very active and is very helpful so I highly suggest joining that group on Facebook I'll try to link it below as well and um, let's get started so I, I first want to address the 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 wallpaper I've got going on here I like to um, have my wallpaper on projects that I'm starting up or working on and this uh, is a painting by Leonid Afromov I guess is how you say it um, called Farewell to Anger and it, it is available as a PDF um, cross stitch pattern from Heaven and Earth Designs and uh, Jan Hicks is starting up a sal on January 1st for this pattern so I thought it would be neat to jump in with that one um, coming up the colors are just amazing and it's really just been you know nice so let's get started <laughs> I'm going to show you first how to import um, things let me just use my finger instead of the stylus yes there we go this is all I've got in there now this shows the um, the PDFs that I've got stored in the app so far and before I start adding another one I wanted to tell you that this is not a PDF editor it's not a PDF viewer it takes specially encoded uh, PDFs of cross stitch patterns and converts it to its own mock-up inside this program so there's no cloud storage service there yet there's no um, you know, if you download it onto your app, onto your tablet, 
you ha can export it as a PDF under this, the little dot, dot, dot option, but it is itself inside the app on its own. If you lose the tablet, for example, you will lose your progress on this app. Just be aware of that, okay? Now there are some ways around that and I will, I will talk about that. But the first thing we're going to do is learn how to add a, um, a PDF to your app. Okay, and you use this icon in the lower right hand corner. And today I'm going to um, I'm going to show you one that's just a freebie from Heaven and Earth Designs. I already uploaded a bunch of patterns onto Drive, Google Drive. Okay, and that is the way that I decided was the easiest way to get my patterns. Okay. So the focus of this tutorial is how to get your PDFs, existing PDFs, over from your iPad, if that's what you already have, um, over to your Android tablet. And um, the easiest thing that I found is to use Google Drive or OneDrive. I have Google, you know, Google Drive already, so I decided to use that. And I know that you can also use Dropbox, but I didn't see any reason to download that. Um, so, um, using Google Drive is a good option. This tablet also has a micro SD card reader, so you can actually physically transfer your PDFs to a card reader, a card, a micro SD card, and Put it into the tablet and physically transfer your files that way but i think it's better and safer to use in a cloud service over wi-fi if that's what you can do because this is your cross stitch pattern collection um and you want to have them safe it's an investment in your time and your money and your energy so you know you don't want to lose anything I've already uploaded um, a lot of patterns into my Google Drive, and I've got a free one that was downloaded from the Heaven and Earth uh, Design website that I'm gonna show you right now. I thought it was would be okay because it is a freebie. So you press the plus button, the bus button that's at the bottom of the thing, and it will pull up your uh, Google Drive the, this is all my cross stitch patterns that I was interested in trying to see if they any of them would be compatible with the program. So we'll see. Um, the only ones that I don't have any issues at all are the Heaven Earth designs and the Artisy designs. So where's this? Okay, there it is right there. This is the freebie that I picked. And you pick your PDF. In this case, it recognizes it as a Heaven and Earth designs pattern. And you for the mock-up they want to know about the overlapping things and you say yes but if it were a different pattern there's a different you could go into advance and fix it but this is a heaven and earth design so there's no reason to argue with it okay now it's processing and when um it's finished we'll go into there and it will show us um a view a mock-up view of the the cross stitch pattern as one large thing. Now what takes up a lot of time for me when I'm doing full coverage, isn't that beautiful? I love that you can see the whole thing and you can zoom in. Um, this is this is a real mock-up with the DMC colors. Um, and really in this point you are confirming that the DMC colors list on the left side is correct. Okay, and usually they do, but okay. So to bring it in and to finish import, you press again this button at the bottom right corner. Okay, so now, now that's already, I, I want to mention that this app is in open, I mean, is in development, so it's, there are bugs, there are known issues, and like I said, it's only available for Android at this time. And there's ways to get Android 
um, the Google Play Store onto your Kindle if you have a Kindle or even run it off of a Mac. But that's not what this is about, okay? I decided it was well worth my time and energy just to buy a separate device, you know? So anyway, um, I wish that that mock-up that we just saw was available that you could go back and look at it at any time, but it's not. And that's a little bit unfortunate, but maybe it's a feature that will be available in the future. I don't know. So anyway, um, when you come to this screen, it shows up all blank. And basically this view is as zoomed out as the, the chart will get. And it shows you, those are page breaks right there. Um, and it shows you as you stitch and complete your progress, it will display in pixel image all of your progress as you save it, okay? So um, it's amazing. <laughs> and I'll show you what we do as we zoom in in a second. But I wanted to also say that when I'm doing full coverage stitching, what takes me the most time is um, looking at the floss list, looking up symbols and trying to find those symbols while you're doing it. And this has really saved me time being able to see all the symbols at once. You know, even when I was working with a PDF pattern on um, um, on my iPad, I was um, having to print out a paper floss list just so I could see and search and, you know, quickly. So this this method and using this app and this device has enabled me to really kick the paper. I mean, I don't, all I need is my project and this tablet and I'm good to go. So, um, the, f the three modes basically in this tablet, I mean, in this app are this feature, which is the zoom and the move around feature, the search feature, and then the markup feature okay and basically you the way I use it is I start moving around to where I'm gonna stitch I search for the symbol that I want to um, look up and then I mark off the symbols with this one so I'm gonna show you how to do that real quick um, but like I said you're gonna have to zoom in quite a bit okay so now I'm going to show you how I would use it to stitch. Um, and, you know, most of the time I do start in the upper left hand corner, but you can zoom to any part of the chart that you want to stitch on. And if you have a grid on your fabric, you can easily go to any part you want. So, um, but I'm going to zoom in up here and move. You zoom in by just using the normal, uh, um gestures and you keep going and as you get down and closer to the to the thing um to the lowest level your grid will start to appear I'm still trying to keep it in the corner and then as you get closer and closer the symbols will start to appear and you can zoom in and zoom in and zoom in and zoom in for as long as much as it takes to comfortably see your entire chart okay so if you have issues with your vision this is very helpful I mean it'll just get bigger that's as big as it gets okay that's pretty big okay and so that is what you do first with the first mode then after you've zoomed to the area you want to start working on you switch to the second mode now i highly recommend using a stylus um, it really does make it a lot easier and prevent fa fatigue in your hands um, so uh, but some of the features when i'm switching between the modes i've noticed you do have to get your finger to do it to respond Okay, so I did it with my finger to get to the search. And then with the, this purpose of this is really neat. Whenever you select a symbol, and I'll just select the star symbol, for example. If I can get it, there it goes. Okay, 
it shows you, it highlights, oh, I'm sorry. See, anytime you move, you have to use the move around tool. I'm gonna make it a little small, I mean, you know. So you, anyway, so for the search symbol, it highlights whatever symbol you pick, see? And all instances of that. And then you can switch to the markup symbol right here and begin as you stitch to mark the symbols off. And you can either tap or you can drag an area, you know through as you complete it. Now what's neat is when you have the search symbol, when you have the symbol selected, you can't inadvertently highlight other symbols. You can only highlight the symbols that are green and searched, okay? And what saves all that time, as soon as you highlight a symbol, it shows you what the floss number is, <laughs> shows you the color, so you can make sure you've really got the right floss color, and it shows you how many stitches are left in the pattern of that particular color. And if you zoom out, okay, let's, there we go. If you zoom out, it you can see 370 is our color, you can see all the instances of 370 throughout the entire chart. All those green highlighted symbols are all the symbols of 370 in this chart. I wish there was a quick way to get to the area you were stitching in. Like I could press and it would zoom into where I had stitches highlighted or something. So, but there are gonna be more features added in the future And that's what the Facebook group and the Trello board is all about. Okay, so the in the markup feature, oops, I un unhighlighted my, get that star symbol again. In the markup feature, um, let's see now if I can get it, okay. It pulls up as purple. I'm pretending that I've stitched this. So I'm stitching along I'm marking my symbols that I've stitched on my grid. You know, I'm just gonna smudge it. I've noticed that smudging um, helps highlight all the symbols. And then at the bottom, there's a click, a check mark. And when you click that check mark, it automatically fills it in with the DMC color. It automatically fills it in with the thread color. And then, as uh, like I said, as you complete more and more symbols and zoom out, you'll get that beautiful mock-up image, okay? And a PDF viewer and a PDF reader will not do that, okay? That's special um, to this app. Okay, so you can see how this is gonna save you a lot of time searching for symbols. There's a lot of two, this twos there. A lot of twos there. It says 5,149 stitches. But I would just go along and mark my symbols as I, as I stitch them. Let's pretend I stitch this. Okay, I'm, I'm looking through. Well, okay, there we go. Okay, so I stitched that. I'm gonna check my check mark and it'll enter those again. Okay, and you can just keep on uh, doing it in your method, you know, just do highlight a few, click check mark, move on. But it's not saved in the app until you press that check mark. If I switch off modes and switch to the symbols, see my highlighting went away. Those Those little purple ones went away. So you gotta be careful that you're doing that. But um, yeah, that's the gist of just marking off your pattern. Now there's other things you can do. For example, if you want to park, um, let me find them. So we're, we're pretending that we're gonna park, we're gonna smear off some of the, 
mark off some, and then I'm gonna park my thread right there. I'm gonna leave it there. Okay, actually, you gotta select your one, your one stitch, I'm gonna park it there. More, there's this more option down at the bottom. Click on more, and it gives you the options where you can park. I like to park in the upper left corner, so that's where I do, and it gives you that little image that in blue that shows you where you've got a parked thread. Now, when I was working with PDFs on my iPad and highlighting them, I would highlight um, in multiple colors to indicate where I had parked my threads. And I did notice when I imported my PDFs that were in progress, um, they did not differentiate between those colored different colors of highlighters. They just marked it off as done. So, um, that is the, I wanted to show you the gist of just marking off a pattern first, which is done, okay? If my biggest, you know, piece of advice is a threefold process. You use all three of these mode buttons at top. First, you move to the area you want to stitch and zoom in to your desired level. You search for the symbol that you want to stitch, okay? It's not required to highlight it in green, but if you don't have anything highlighted, if you don't have anything highlighted, then when you go to the mark off version, you can mark off any and all symbols at one time, okay? So what's good about using the search feature oops, is if you have the search feature on, then when you go to mark off the, PD, the, the little symbols, you won't inadvertently mark one that you don't mean to. You'll only mark the ones that are green that are highlighted like that. Okay, well, I stitched those, so whatever. Okay, so that's the gist of um, marking off your patterns, okay? Now, um, to go back, you swipe up a little bit and go back, and this will show you all of your patterns. Now, I brought this, this one in that I had been working on, a stitch in time, um, and it had progress already on it as an, well, that I had worked on my iPad. And I just wanted to let you guys know that when I imported it, it imported all my highlighted progress in there. See? That's the mock-up that's there. And my chart, except for where I have parked threads, they got, they got, um, if I zoom in there, you know, it would just show you that they got highlighted. And uh, anyway, so I just wanted to let you know that your progress will save and come into Android um, without any problem, okay? Now, however, once it's in the app, and you start marking progress on your app, the only way to get it off, for example, is to export your progress. Um, my progress, real quick, just to show you how it's done, but um, this is the only way you can get it back onto your iPad and not lose your progress. So I wanted to show how you do it. Uh, this just gives you the option to put it straight in Google Drive Save to Drive, it has it saved as a PDF with the date and the timestamp on it. So if you save it to Drive, okay. Done and save, okay. So there it goes, it's being uploaded to Drive. And then you can pull it back in. It's in the cloud and it's saved as a normal PDF. It's not saved as a Pattern Keeper app, okay? So that is really covering the basic features for um, um, this pa cross-stitch pattern app. So far, it's really helpful. 
Um, I would like to cover more on how I specifically, how it's changed my stitching style in just a few days since I've used it. So if you're interested in that video, um, let me know or look out for it. And I just wanted to say thank you guys for watching again. I hope that you, this has been a helpful video uh, to explain some of the basic features and, um, you know, really exciting. It, I feel like you know, everyone keeps saying, oh, it's a game changer. You know, it's changing everything. And I really feel like it's pushing our craft into the future. And we can do things with technology that people couldn't have been able to do prior to the invention of the computers and things like that. You know, cross stitch can be um, improved with technology or just like other things. So I think it's great. And um, if you have any questions, just leave a comment and let me know and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.